A 15-year-old girl is in critical condition this morning after being brutally beaten by a 15-year-old boy. And police say it was a dispute over text messages that triggered the attack. Mac, Matt Gutman has more. When 15-year-old Wayne Tracy hunted down 8th grader Josie Ratley Wednesday, police say he beat nearly to death a girl he'd never even seen before. He punched her. She fell to the ground. He continued to punch her. He stomped on her. Investigators say he then kicked her, quote, soccer style with steel-toed boots. It was painful uh, just to see all the blood gushing out of her head. 15-year-old Ratley was unconscious by the time a teacher managed to pry Tracy off. Police say it began when Tracy, who never had disciplinary problems, tried to reach his 13-year-old girlfriend, Kayla Manson, who doesn't own a cell phone. So he texted her friend, Ratley, who expressed her disapproval of his relationship with Manson. She responded back in, in, a, in a manner, she said some things he didn't really like. Specifically, Sheriff Lamberti told ABC News, one text mentioned the recent suicide of Tracy's older brother, whom the 15-year-old found hanging from a tree. In a rage, investigators say he texted friends that he was going to kill Ratley and rode his bicycle to the school. His girlfriend, Manson, now charged as an accessory, pointed out Ratley as she waited at the middle school's bus loop. The types of texts that triggered that merciless attack and landed Josie here in critical condition, part of her skull had to be removed to relieve the swelling, are of increasing concern to child psychologists. Tracy, who's been charged with premeditated attempted murder, was consumed by something Lamberti is calling text rage. Psychologists say the impersonality of electronic messages might actually inflame anger. If someone offends you eye to eye, you yell, you may express anger. But in a text message or an electronic communication, the individual is not responding as though it's a person. For Good Morning America, Matt Gutman, ABC News, Fort Lauderdale. And joining us to talk more about this is Dr. Michael Bradley, a child psychologist and author of the book, Yes, Your Teen is Crazy. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. You say text rage is not only on the rise, but we're even seeing something called text riots. Yeah, in a number of cities now we have this thing where kids send out a message to their kind of a group of friends, let's all meet at such and such a place and riot, break windows, steal things and actually beat up people and then run away. Is it the technology? I mean, we've, we've often thought even about email. Um, it's very easy to vent in an email and then push send, as opposed to when you're seeing somebody and seeing the impact your words have. Is that vacuum that you're sort of communicating in leading to people going a little too far? You know, it really is, and we're worried that this is the crossover between the technology and the impulsivity of teen brains. They've always been impulsive. Teen brains are sort of uh, like cars. They have the problem of unintended acceleration, and they don't have brakes to rein in the impulse. Back in the day, when you're dealing with somebody face to face, that sort of slowed down those crazy things from happening. But on the screen, in cyber kinds of interactions, we worry that this stuff just kind of bang, zoom, runs into these terrible behaviors. And you not only have, of course, the lack of impulse control for teenagers, but you also have, you argue, a generation that has become somewhat insensitized to violence. And that we do have a lot of research on. We've got kids today that are desensitized to violence. Uh, a lot of kids will stand and watch a, a real life violent scene and sort of react as if they're watching a television screen. They don't really kind of make the connection. And this might be a good example of where we're seeing this terrible overlap between the technology and the challenges that young teens have with their brains. We saw that just on the West Coast where a young girl, a teenager was being beaten terribly by another young girl and not only teenagers but grown-ups were standing around just watching. Absolutely. And they weren't watching for fun. And they, when, they, when they talked, a lot of these people were just kind of vague, like just sort of watching a, a movie dispassionately, not connecting, that screaming was real and the pain was real. And do you worry as technology becomes more and more prevalent uh, in our daily lives that this problem is going to grow? You know, I don't know. Anecdotally, I, myself and some other experts are seeing that maybe the pendulum is coming back with these horrible stories. Kids themselves are now saying, you know something, maybe this has gone over the edge with the drug, sex and violence stuff. I, I see that beginning to hope, beginning to happen, and I hope it continues. We just 
just had some a, a young celebrity in her 20s announced that she was giving up tweeting because she said, <coughs> I found myself sp sitting in front of a computer all day long. Go outside instead and spend some time in the park with friends. I mean, exactly. there does seem to be an awareness all of a sudden that it can be an isolating artificial experience. That's what we're hoping is that, you know, there's this trend back. The economy crashing has helped with the entitlement issues with a lot of kids. And maybe the technology crashing is going to help with kids discovering there's better ways to interact. There's a better way to be a human being. And of course, always parents get in there, talk to your kids about that importance. The safest kids are the ones who are closest to the hearts of their parents. So keep that connection. All right, Dr. Michael Bradley, good advice for teenagers and their parents and families. Thanks so much for being here this Thanks, morning. Thanks, Elizabeth.